All right, we are rolling. 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 Chris Hardy, National Director of Sales for Expel? Uh, close. Uh, oh. Director of Sales for Expel, focus on the Americas. Um, we have Eric Cummins, who's also Director of Sales, and he focuses on the Overseas International. Okay. And um, before you take us on a tour, sure. I thought it would be good to, like, in layman's terms, what is your position? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, what is your goal as in that position? Main goal is to motivate the entire sales team across the Americas to obviously generate um, healthy revenue, right? Revenue in which case we are doing it with our Expel partners, all of our independent shops and installers in a conducive way whereby they're growing their business rather than us just adding as many businesses as possible to the, to the network. And then, you know, I, I obviously have a lot of clientele that I've interacted with over the years and I have a lot of fun still interacting with them on a daily. I, I get, I get, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 phone calls a day from our customers that have of course reps that they also love and report to or speak to, but uh, still interact with me also. How is that like managing between like so many different people, I assume it only becomes more and more people. Like that yeah. only grows and there's only so many hours of the day. Yeah, so I mean, look, uh, we've, gotten, we've gotten to the point where we've gotten some incredible people within our community that we've promoted, right? Um, we have Alex Christ and Zach Locker who are now promoted to regional sales managers, much like what I used to do prior to the new role. Um, so, you know, they're overseeing the TMs um, certainly on a daily level more so than I am. Um, and then I've had uh, Vic Gonzalez in Mexico who oversees not only Mexico, but Latin America. And uh, at some point uh, soon, I'll put an RSM into the role of, uh, of overseeing Canada. And then of course I've got uh, Patrick Boudreau who's uh, overseeing all the Protex uh, franchises. So, so I, yeah, I, I definitely have like mid-level managers, but I, I don't know what to tell you. Like I'm addicted to this. Like I, I still love it. The daily with, and I, I mean, it's, it's the clients that got me here, right? I mean, it, it's that, it's that relationship bond, I don't know, progress, all of it. And, I would uh, imagine that feels stronger than ever being that it's only a week or so coming out of XDC. Yeah. XDC. Wow. Like, look, XDC was... <laughs> sublime right? i don't know like every year xdc has been amazing every year last year was the greatest year ever and you know unfortunately we thought we had booked uh our normal slot for the uh you know third week of february or whatever it is like normal with the hotel and we had somebody else in charge of it at the time and and we thought that they had said that they had finished the contract well lo and behold when we were wondering why the hotel hadn't asked for money yet. <clears throat> you know, they were like, what are you talking about? You didn't sign the contract. We gave your spot away. Well, that left us scrambling, right? So we ended up grabbing a day in April, right? Later April, that we would not normally have chosen. This is, we, we know that for, especially the Northern operations, that's not ideal. Like it's not ideal for anybody because it's a very busy time, but it's really not ideal for the Northern operations because maybe December and January and February is slower for them when you've got, you know, heavy duty snow and what have you. And now you're just starting to really pick up. And last thing you want to do is, you know, walk away for a few days and go and participate in a dealer conference. Yet we were over 20% larger uh, attendance uh, from our client base than we ever have in our entire history. And we were spread over a bunch of hotels, Luxottica, had their convention going on at the same time. So rather than uh, the host hotel of the convention also holding all of our, our customers and our employees, um, we had to spread that out over four hotels, I think, or five hotels was the final number because even the day of some of the hotels had double booked some of our rooms and they were, you know, relocating clients. Mm -hmm. um, but all said, uh, there's not a single person that I haven't interacted with that didn't tell me that that was the greatest dealer conference in our history, you know, 
we went all out on the guest speaker this year, Jesse Itzler, world renowned. I mean, the guy that started Marquee Jets and, you know, and uh, Zinco, the, the, the uh, coconut water that he sold to, to, to Coca Cola. His wife started Spanx. She just sold that for $1.4, $1.3 billion. Um, super energetic, amazing individual. <sighs> Knock my socks off. I've, I've heard him on the Joe Rogan podcast and I was impressed, but live in person, crazy better. And we had, uh, you know, of course, uh, uh, all of our competitions, right? We had massive giveaways. There was, I think this year, there was something like 40000 or $42,000 in cash. And that was given actually away by, by uh, Goldberg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was the one that came and gave it away. He brought it. His WWF and WWE wrestling belts with him was super cool. Um, we had an amazing breakout sessions, some that we hadn't had before. Uh, you know, Mike Mayall always crushes it. He did a different one this year than last, which was awesome because obviously a lot of people attended last year. And so him to have a completely different lineup this year was great. Harry Rahman's um, always incredibly well received. And he had um, Lindsay working with them this year. And I, I think Regina, actually Regina Love was working with them also in that this year. So that was well done. Mike Burke and Thad Norman though, I think they did nine breakout sessions. And I think of all of the breakout sessions that we hosted, I think his was the, sorry, not his, theirs, was the one that was spoken about the most. Um, what else? I mean, you know, the 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 we we launched the new coatings uh, with the one year, the eight year, the stealth specific called Satin, and of course the Aeronautic, and we launched the Aeronautic with a G450 video and the, you know, Boeing testing all included with it and stuff. So people were really caught off guard. And then we we you know we did a lot of uh, recognition and awards. You know, we had some very unique ones this year. Um, we added a bunch to the lineup, uh, you know, uh, most proficient x -belt dealer, obviously went to Tim Ham and Felony Film. I mean, here's a guy that's approaching seven digits a year and purchasing with only four, four, four employees. Um, you know, uh, we had um, Cole Freeman, Mark Freeman's uh, son. Uh, this kid is 14 or 15 years old and just slaughtering it with um, ceramic coating. He's got his own business going on and they, they they left XDC and they went back to New York and he was coding this insane boat. <laughs> like the whole next day, I don't even know if he made it to school on Monday. And then, of course, one of my favorite ladies in the entire planet, Maddie Cochran, right? Madeline Cochran, which is Chuck Cochran's daughter. I know you know her quite well. Um, this kid... You know, she's had some some tough spots in her life, right? I mean, she's she's got some challenges and some disabilities, and and yet she's nothing but a bundle of joy twenty four seven. I don't even think that she brought her wheelchair. She had that that crazy surgery that went on to elongate the muscles and stuff like that to her ankles, and and she was able to walk up on stage, and she was the Expel brand ambassador, uh, you know, for 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 twenty twenty three and. I hope I don't start breaking into tears right now, but like the minute that I wrap my arms around her and she hugged me, I, I don't know, we, we held each other for a few minutes in this really tight embrace. And again, like you, you feel this joy from this kid. I, I was, I mean, thank God my back was turned to the, to the audience because I was bawling. <laughs> I could, I turned around, I was just like, man. <laughs> Uh, you know, we had uh, Billy Ellis with our brand ambassador for PPF. We had uh, David from TriTech, brand ambassador for Tint. Um, we had Automobilia from and Alex Jones, um, brand ambassador for Coatings. And of course, we had, um, you know, all of our normal yearly, win uh, sorry, uh, national winners. That's just the U.S., right? Never mind the fact that we had Canada. Mm -hmm. Canada was here this year. We had a lot of international was here this year. Um, we had a ton of Latin American that was here this year. Um, you know, our good friends at Expel Brazil, Mato and his, and his team, Claudio and everybody. I mean, they were there. And it was amazing. I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, I, I know that, you know, some other companies recently had their dealer conference, and I'm sure there were amazing success stories. As a matter of fact, I, I heard a lot of great things about some of the other ones that were going on. Hey, hats off to them. Well done. Um, 
and you know, I get it. Like I had some people that couldn't make it and wanted to make it. I had people that had to cancel last minute and, you know, Brett and Tiffany from all American is a good example. And I was just talking to Brett yesterday and he was so sad that he didn't attend XDC and especially after watching everything going on, he's a big Ryan Martin fan and to see, us get the full livery edition for Ryan Martin's car for 2023 NPK. And what was super cool was that the unveiling of the car was at the other conference, right? It's normally unveiled on the Discovery Channel as a lead up to the season. Mm -hmm. And we unlocked, we unveiled it there instead. We had uh, also the livery edition of uh, Scott McLaughlin's Indy car there. And I you know, like there's too many things to even talk about. Lewis was there, of course, with all those snazzy hats. We gave a hat away to, I think, every single customer and had custom T-shirts. And the uh, Speaking of that, like shirts and everything, the, uh, the visual of how you set up the merch, like the white, you know, area, like the very looked awesome on video and in the pictures that I saw, it was extremely well done amongst other aspects. But since we're talking about the merch, that stood out. And, the, and it's all it's really cool, new, very modern, very artistic, and, you know, I don't know, like, in touch, uh, um, new, new, new gear. Look, let me be very fair. Uh, Kristen Gish uh, is a woman who was an independent contractor for us uh, last year on, on uh, XDC. And we were all so impressed with her that we actually – got together and said, we need to create a job, a new title, and then we need to encourage her to apply for it and see if she'll give up her own business and come work with us and no better event planner and, and then way more event manager. I mean, I'm starting butchering her title, but theater conference really hats off to her. When, when her and I were talking about the, um, the guest speaker, I had had some other people in mind and she was like, no, 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 listen to me. You, I, I got you. I got you. You got to listen. I, I, it's the, he's the guy. I'm like, yeah, like I remember him on a podcast and yeah, I was impressive, but really like he's the guy. And she's like, he's the guy. And thank God I listened to her because man, like no, every single person I've spoken to said never in the history of Expo have you had a better, and we've had some great ones. Uh, never have we had a better woman than, than Jesse. So, you know, what can I say? You have approximately nine months to top this, right? Yeah. And it's, that's it. Nine months. Yeah. The, the next three years is, is, is back in its regular date. We had, uh, we had some good friends and guests that were there who really were recommending that next year, what we need to do is do a full line, uh, cruise ship and, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, well, we booked the hotel and the conference like already, but those are contracts. I don't know. I think we can get out of those. But that's a man. I really like the idea. Maybe I'll do one of my own, you know, normal things that I do every winter, where with a with a bunch of key st uh, customers saying, "Hey, who wants to go on a cruise?" I don't know. Maybe I'll pull that off instead. But uh, you know, we missed you. You know, I, I I know that you were obviously at Coachella with your wife, and she really wanted to go. And I know that was a blast. But damn, it was it sucked not having you there. I gotta tell you that. I, I definitely I, missed being there, and. Uh... Hopefully next year we'll uh, I'll be there. Yeah, I imagine at some point you're there has to be some sort of talk because at some point, if you have all your dealers and you potentially have like people from you know the dealership networks and potentially other countries and all your staff even in North America, like I could imagine at some point you you outgrow the space and you just have to be in something else, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, look, uh, even this year, right when we realized that it was. April that was the early there was the only date that we could get with the host with the host hotel also with the rooms was in June and I'm like no and then Kristen of course went and did her normal magic and that's how we came up with this date but knew that Luxottica had booked over 3,000 rooms in San Antonio for that for that same exact time frame um, but she was like oh you know are we even going to hit 500? I'm like, 500? Are you crazy? We're going to smash that number. And she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, man, are you, man, if I get on the phone myself, I can book 200, 200 rooms, like no problem. 
I need to start texting people going, yeah, I need your next DC. They're coming. Because everybody every looks forward to it every year. Like every every year we're done. They're like, hey, when can I book for next year? Is it can I do it now? Right. Um and and then the number went way over it. I mean, like way over it. And and she was like, Chris, you gotta you gotta stop. Like, I don't know where I'm gonna find space. And I'm like, I get it, but like, like, what do you want me to do? Like these people reach out to me and they text me and they're like, hey, somehow can you make it happen? And, you know, we like we did and I don't know what can I, what can I say? Like Mike Mejia, our new director of marketing, you know, was his first XDC and with him in charge of it, obviously. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I don't want to take it away from Kristen. Kristen, Kristen was the one that really genuinely deserved the highest accolades for it. Um, she does work underneath Michael and I'm like, Mike, like, <laughs> and like, you're right. You got your work cut out for you because I didn't think we'd be able to top last year. And we crushed it. Now, how do you do it next year? Just like SEMA. Like, last year was our most successful SEMA ever, our most successful party. Uh, I know that people are still talking about it. A lot of people showed up at uh, XDC with their uh, Ray-Ban sunglasses from SEMA that we did, right? And, uh, you know, Chris and I have got some really cool ideas for our SEMA party this year. We'll see. Uh, but, you know, like, how, how do you top it? How do you keep doing something more and greater than you did before? Like, I, I don't know. I'm not creative enough to come up with it. That's for damn sure. So thankfully we have some unbelievably talented people within the expo community to help us out. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of this, isn't you're actually in a, you're new in a new office space, right? You're not, um, not your previous house where we've done uh, other tent wisdoms. So yeah. tell me a little more about where you're at. Well, uh, all right. So number one is, you know, one of the roles that I've been recently tasked with is I'm part of the hiring committee with a uh, director and above level. And what had happened was when we ended up uh, hiring Mike Mejia to be the director of marketing, Ryan Pape, our CEO, had sent out an email to the, to the, to the few of us that were on that committee and said, hey, just want to let everybody know that, you know, we, we like we all talked about, Mike Mejia was the number one pick and he's accepted the role. And he's going to be based here in San Antonio as all director levels should be a director and above level should be. And I'm like, I read it and I'm like, uh Oh, like, I'm director level and I'm not in San Antonio. And I was wondering if there was like an underlying message there, to be honest, like, cause that's the way I think. And, you know, maybe a little kind of, you know. <laughs> and so I, I called Ryan and I had a one-on-one -on -one with him. I just said, Hey Ryan, I hope I didn't read too much into this, but you know, I'm director and I'm not in San Antonio. And, are you about to tell me I have to be? He said, no, like, I think it's really cool that you're calling and you're asking about it, but no, I'm, I'm not bringing this up to you. You're bringing it up to me. And the fact of the matter is uh, you're grandfathered in. If you want to stay where you are, you can, but I know that you have higher aspirations within this company. And I said, yeah, I want your job one day. Like, you know, there's no secret about that. You know it as well as I do. And I'm not sure I'll ever get it, but I hope to. He said, well, I'll tell you this, you, you will never get it if you're not here at head office. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Read between the lines. So uh, I then called, of course, Matt Moreau. He's my he's the person I directly report to. And of course, he's been my mentor at Expo uh, since day one. He's the gentleman that, that hired me and, and brought me in in the first place. And I asked him the same question. And he said, look, like, same thing as Matt. Like, it's really cool that you're coming to us with this, but we're not asking you to. And but I, I think we could get a lot more accomplished if you were here, especially with your responsibilities. And yeah, like, I think it'd be great if you were here. So I talked to my wife that very night and she said, look, we, we moved to Senate, you know, we moved to South Carolina for, for two reasons. One, I think it's no secret that my dad had cancer and I wanted to spend some time around him in case, you know, something went south and it ultimately did. And, you know, he passed away a few years ago, but the other reason was because of Expo, right? They had this job offer. And so she said, look, like we go where your job says to go. And I said, okay. So San Antonio it is. And so I am now here. I am, as of yesterday at like one o'clock, um, Tatiana and I and the kids moved into a beautiful rental home in uh, in uh, Alamo Heights, which is a really nice area of, of, of Expel. And, um, oh, sorry, of, of San Antonio, sorry. I'm reading somebody to message me in the background. 
And uh, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to look to uh, find a builder and a, and a plot of land and build from scratch, you know, a forever home exactly the way we want it. And uh, I think that we probably locked on to Bernie, um, which is a suburb again of, of uh, Expo, um, supposedly the number one school district in Texas. Sorry, I said Expo a second time. Yeah, San Antonio. I don't know what's wrong with me. And, uh, and uh, it's stunning there, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, like this is not a uh, background like your purple wall is. These, uh, this is actually real. Um, wait, wait, wait. I am, I am in a stunning uh, reclaimed building, I guess is what you would call it, for lack of a better term, called the uh, Soto Building. And it's at 7-Eleven Broadway. If you're in the neighborhood and you're an expo client and you would like to see our new facility, by all means. But if you'd like, I will take you on a tour of some of this. Um, Do it. Let's see. Let's if, full am, screen. I able to, am I able to uh, reverse screen this? Hmm. Let's see. Do you know if you can somehow? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Might nope. be shooting blind. All right. Well, or you could selfie it. You could walk backwards. That, that's what. Yeah, that's what's that's gonna true. happen. That's, that's what's gonna happen. And what I'll do is I'll turn it this way, and we'll see if that gives more. All right. Here we go. So, <laughs> let's go on a little tour with Chris Hardy. Let me make sure I got my key to get me back in. So there's a lot to it. I'm just gonna show you guys some of it. Like there's stunning um, showers and everything like that. I mean, basically, I feel like we're in like a like a google center you know like there is um stunning um other operations within this building but you get off the elevator and you see this gorgeous uh expo wall uh this is still getting finished up uh so you're seeing this as it's not really quite complete but we're close um so we walk in and there's a you know a nice little uh waiting area go through a lot of glass and you walk into um, some of our offices. You know, uh, this is our new head counsel. Uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but I think it's Tooney, if, you're, if I'm not mistaken. This is, of course, Barry's, our CFOs. We've got um, a lot of shared space in here. We've got these really cool, ultra modern, uh, you know, break rooms with water dispensers and snacks and foods and blah, blah, blah. And then there's, I mean, this is for me, right? Cause everybody knows that I'm really loud when I'm on the phone. So if, if, if it gets really touchy, I can jump into one of these little booths. They actually have air conditioning in the roof cause that was my first concern if I was in there for half an hour, charging stations, et cetera. And you, you close the door and there's no way you can hear. I mean, even me at my loud voice, you can't hear anything. And then, so I'll continue to, let's walk the other way. And you can see that we're downtown San Antonio, right? It's a gorgeous building. The whole front of the building is now like this glass thing, kind of looks like a, uh, like the Louvre. <laughs> and, uh, you know, ultra modern meeting, meeting rooms. Um, this is just one of small ones, but as soon as you want, you can just touch the keypad and you can schedule yourself or you can also do it online. My boss, right? There's uh, Matt's office. Mm, this is my office. You can see we don't, I haven't even put up any artwork. I can guarantee you that I'm going to have some jujitsu stuff and obviously some racing stuff from Ryan and some of the NASCAR, what have you. Don't even have my name on the door yet. Uh, this is Mike Mejia's. Um, more, um, you know, generalized meeting areas and offices again. And then um, Ryan Pape is, was having a good laugh with me earlier. Um, he's been a, the CEO of the company for 15 years. He's never had a window in his office. So now he's got a corner office. <laughs> uh, and again, like you can see these, like we've got lots of these larger meeting rooms. Um, insane. Look at this cool backsplash on the wall i love it and then there's people on the phone phone down there so i won't do this but you know you can see that it just keeps going and there's more of these meeting rooms there's um 
like these rooms that you can go in if you need like 10 minutes or 15 minutes to yourself, like a, like a meditation room kind of idea. <laughs> Maybe a mental sanitation room is probably a better way of putting it. I don't know. Um, it's gorgeous. It's stunning. Your like, uh, the video froze up real quick, just a few seconds oh, ago. Oh, did it? Okay. What'd you miss? Just the last couple seconds, frankly, it's um, I'm we're in a conference room, but it's just got on freezes. You didn't really miss much. Just don't want to miss anything. So we were in the conference room, and then we started walking out of that. Did you but see it's still frozen you? is the problem. Oh, it's frozen right now. Right. Oh, so, hold on. Okay, now it's it's coming back though. It's unfrozen. Are we good? Yeah, it's a little like choppy maybe, but it's not frozen anymore. But it seems like almost maybe far from the internet or something changed. Oh, hold on. Tell me if we're getting better. Still no good? I feel like it's coming back, but... Um, well, hold on. Right. Let me know if it is, because I can take off. I mean, I mean, I think I'm attached to Wi-Fi. I can stop that. Yeah, try stopping the Wi-Fi. Let's see if that makes a little Let's better. Let's see if that helps. Hold on, everybody. We're having some technical difficulties. It's part of it. Explode. Better or worse? Uh, completely black screen Way for worse. some reason. <laughs> I don't know why it's completely black now. Way you sound worse. better though. It sounds good. So, all right. Ooh, sound like now, I, now I can see you perfectly fine. Am I fine? I think we're back. I feel like you're fine. It doesn't look super crystal. I think it's back now. It's just not. I don't know. Tell me, tell me what you think. If you want, I can like go back to Wi-Fi. Trying to decide. You, okay. you got to go back to Wi-Fi for sure. In real time. Okay. You got to go back to Wi-Fi for sure. You almost want to maybe close it out and rejoin the link. Sure. Let me do might, that. Might solve, but Wi-Fi is definitely okay. the way to go. Okay. I'll do the Wi-Fi first. All right, so just have a couple minutes, maybe just a minute. Um, we'll be right back, I'm sure. We'll uh, keep the discussion going and the tour. I have some questions about DAP. There we are. I think it's 100% now. Good. Yay. Yeah, definitely 100%. I'm sorry. That was worth it. <laughs> well, congratulations. So on how, much, how much of that did you get to see? Did you see most of it? Most of it. It was just the very end. Um, how many people would you say you're planning on housing there over time once it's at capacity? It's like hundreds? No, no, no. Because think about this. Like the, the, the intention for here is the executive team, the finance team, and the marketing team. But we have lots of offices at, um, at what we would now, of course, call our central warehouse. Right, because we were how we we had a head office that we gave up, and then we temporarily moved into where into the warehouse where we created quite a few offices. There's a lot of offices there. You can easily fit 100 plus people in offices there, like including like common areas, like common desk areas. Right. Then on top of that, we have um, our San Antonio uh, installation center right? Our, 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 our personal store. And uh, from what I understand, we're building out stunning new offices there for the design team and things of that. So, you know, we're growing, like we're constantly growing. And um, I don't know if I can reveal any details yet, but we're growing even more as of today. Uh, another acquisition happened today. I can't, I won't reveal the details yet. There's probably going to be people that are already going to be chiming in on this. Uh, rumors getting out pretty fast, but um, massive acquisition happened today for Expel. And uh, it's 
uh, really good news. And uh, but I I won't say anything and for fear that maybe it's not public, uh, totally public knowledge as of yet. Well, congratulations. That's Thank always you. exciting. Thank you. Yeah, it's really exciting. <laughs> so Lots customer services will be housed at the pre, like where no, I, previously that's a, that's a great question. Um, is customer support going to be, I, yeah, my, sus, my suspicion is that customer support will be there. Keep in mind that we do permit a lot of customer support to also work from home. That's good. Um, and even here we have hybrid um, schedules. We're not, we're not. At this moment, Ryan is not asking people to to come in and work Monday to Friday, nine to five. Um, I, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll, I will when I'm in town because, of course, I travel a lot. I'm sure I'll have to not have to because that sounds rude, but I'm sure I'll be at the office every day that I'm in town um, again because I need to get a lot more accomplished. And in order to do that, I need to communicate with with Matt and Ryan, right? Those are the really the two that I communicate the most with in terms of decision making and and uh, strategy and planning. Um, Bliss and her team as well, they're here. Um, Mike Mejia, as I said, and Kristen, they're here. So uh, I think that almost every moment that I that I'm in town, I'll, I'll and you know working hours, if you will, I'll I'll be here. But no, everybody else is picking like you know Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or whatever, Tuesday through when Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like, I think most of are going to do like a three day on two day off and customer support. I, I don't know if some of them are not still a hundred percent working from home. Uh, big team. Like you're talking, not including today's acquisition, you're talking like 850 plus employees, I think. So, and I never know because the numbers always evolving. <laughs> well, it's incredible because I think, I think like, my, my perception, I think a lot of people's perception is Expel is this giant company and, and it is right. But at the same time, like even in the last three to four years, you can see big became giant. It wasn't giant forever. It's constantly growing and taking these bigger and bigger leaps and steps. And you can see them over the last handful of years. Yeah. I mean, and as you know, I mean, they're doing unbelievably well and it's no secret, you know, our shareholders know that we're sitting on a pile of cash and they don't want us to to just sit on it and we have no plans on sitting on it, right? Every single dollar that we earn over and above does not go into um, dividends. All the money gets poured back into the company. It's all growth strategy. So there's a lot more acquisition that's coming down the pipeline, um, a lot more, a, a, a lot more. And there's some really exciting, you know, like today's, it's going to, there's going to be quite a few people that are going to be quite shocked with today's um, acquisition announcement. There's a lot more of those coming, really big ones and, and smaller ones. But, you know, Mike Mayall is the one heading that up right now. And, you know, as you guys remember, Mike was the person I was reporting to um, when I was uh, an, an RSM and super talented individual, really good at, at, at this niche that he's uh, that that he's taking on for Expel, uh, you know, it's it's awesome, and uh, I and I'm really excited to see what else they they continue to do. I, I know of some of them, you know, but obviously being publicly traded, you can't disclose any of it um, beforehand. Well, it's definitely exciting. Um, I think you know, anytime there's acquisitions or movement or growth or anything, I think it's it's something to watch, and uh, you know. Uh, so I get excited over it. I can't wait to see. I'll be refreshing yeah, I, my screen. I got, I got, you know, yesterday, Zach Locker and Alex Chris and I were on our, on our team call. Uh, these are my two RSMs, by the way, if you remember, in, in the United States. And um, we were reviewing um, April's numbers. And <laughs> it's just like, wow, we did what? Like, sorry, but how much extra is, wait, was that revenue or is that extra? And they're like, no, that's extra revenue. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like we're talking profit, like yeah. And I went and looked for myself because I've been on the road, like driving from Myrtle Beach over to here. You know, we have to wait until after the month is closed to really be able to see the numbers accurately. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I was like beside myself. I mean, you know, I, I don't get it, but I hear rumblings of some companies doing some big layoffs and you know, early early retirement packages and things like that, and. And, you know, they're, and, you know, in this industry and I'm like, wow, like, I, I guess they're not maybe 
maybe they're you know, not doing as well as they'd like to be right now, but I'm sure that they'll, they'll, they'll do awesome overall. And then I look at our numbers and I'm like, holy crap, like we're still growing at the same crazy rate and keep growing and it's not changing. So I don't know, love it. Our Expo community is, is what gets us there, right? I mean, you know that as well as I do. And I'm sure that's true for other brands. It was, I was having this really good conversation with somebody just the other day and, and uh, we went back to that like single branding idea. And th this gentleman in particular is a, a Lumar um, client. And, uh, and he, you know, look, it was, I don't know, like, I don't, I, I don't think he was actually like coming to me saying, Hey, like, can you please convince me to, to join Expel? He was actually more like interested in understanding like the single branding concept. And I, and I'm like, well, do you do anything besides Lumar? And he does a little bit of something, another brand as well. I said, Something happened. Uh, we're frozen, so see how that resolves itself. I'm sure, it will. And just uh, give that a moment. Well, there we go. Hey, we're back. And I don't understand it. Like, sorry, guys, but clearly, as you guys know, this is a brand new building, fully up to speed. And so <laughs> we're having some typical technical difficulties, but I don't know. Even when I tried the 5G, though, it wasn't working. So I don't know, something's up. But I was, anyways, I don't know where I lost you except to say that I was having this gentleman. I don't feel like he was actually like uh, uh, anything other than trying to understand single source um, opportunity. And I, and I had mentioned to him, like, hey, are you using anybody else? And he had said this, like, he was using another brand as a secondary. And I just said, look, like, I, I wouldn't. Like, and here's why. And I, I went through it with him. He was like, man, like, I'm so glad that you took that time to explain that to me. And, and um, he was, you know, he, he had said that, you know, after our call, he was going to, you know, he was going to drop to the brand and be Lumar, Lumar and Lumar only. I said, great. Like, that's what you should be. Like, and be happy and content with it. And your clients are going to feel 100 times better about about you know you being just with them and not second guessing why you're offering this over that in that sales process so so <clears throat> the single brand uh -oh. thing obviously works out or it uh -oh. has been working out what no i mean it's it's not even a real question it's more so like here we go question. here comes the here comes the here comes the one out of left field Get me. no it's the hypothetical every single every single time it's really a hypothetical it truly go ahead. Is. Go ahead. Um, every single time we've always talked about DAP and making DAP exclusive to Expel and yeah. Expel dealers and so on. Now, that has been, a tr in my opinion, a tremendous value add for Expel dealers. If you're part of it, you're an Expel network, having Expel, having access to DAP is enormous. Like it just, you know, how many threads are there that say what cuts off there should I use? And they start with, if you have access to DAP, use that. If not, here are your options. Like right. that's what it is. Right. My thought or question is that process happened about two years ago. Give or mm, take. No, let me, me let me be more specific. Okay. It started in 2017 for me, but only in the area that I was overseeing. But your two years ago it really started getting rolled out everywhere. Yes. Kind of made like the splash, like yes. to where people yes. were like, oh shit, I need another yeah. option or I need to figure yeah. this out. Yeah. Um which then made like this tremendous value over in the market where it's like, well, who can come up with a better software now? Not better. It doesn't have to even be better. It just has to be the best over here. Right. Sure. And, yeah. and I just wonder as the mar as your dealer network matures, your dealer network is there and so on. It's, you're not necessarily like uh, in as heavy, maybe act growth of those networks, maybe, maybe give or take, whatever. Sure. The question essentially is, what do you think would happen to the market if you were to at some point say DAP now at a higher price is available to non expel dealers, hypothetically, right. and it becomes obviously instead of, you know, let's say uh, the such a key 
aspect for uh, being in the dealer network, it becomes a big revenue source for Expel, which also then goes back into the software, potentially making it better. But what I'm wondering is, do you see that having any merit? Does it take the wind out of the sails of other companies who may be heavily invested in a software if that potentially could happen? Okay, so yes, but I would never do it. So 100%, like not to sound really rude to any other softwares. I mean, it's no, I don't think it's any secret that everybody would agree that Expel's DAP is the most comprehensive by a long shot in pattern database and the best consistent fitting in pattern database for paint protection film. And I would say window tint from 2016 onwards, because that's when we brought the tint patterning in-house and, and not relied on third party, right? And again, I, I'm not looking to debate it or not. I, I know that 99% of the people out there would agree with me and the obvious starhards won't. And and not to say that there isn't some other good pattern companies. Of course there is, you know, Core is is definitely, my my personal opinion, the second best, and it sounds rude to say second best, so forgive me guys, but. Uh, to me, core is is the next is the next best option, right? And they have now offered their software at a higher price um, if you're not using their film. Well, if I was to suddenly turn on that, I think they would lose every single one of those clients from purchasing core because people want DAP over everything else. Right or wrong, that's the reality. You know, and could and it, it would be a profit center. It would be a profit center with with very minimal cost associated, other than right. the people that make the patterns, the hosting of the patterns, the right, the software itself, and the administrator and stuff like that. But it's it, it's looked at as like almost like a hundred percent profit. But it's wrong, and the reason it's wrong is because it hurts my Expel dealer network. We used to use DAP as a revenue stream on its own, right? You used to be able to buy DAP on a monthly subscription. And if you're using another film, pay a premium to use the other film at a dollar per square foot on paint protection film. And at the end of the day, we all know that whatever film an installer is currently using is the one that they think is genuinely the best on the market. Like they really do like no argument, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what brand it is, whatever film they're currently using, the installer will believe that that's the best product that there is available to them. And if you try and switch them from that product, they have nightmares and, you know, major hangups over it. So, they'll pay the dollar premium to stick with what they know and deliver the same kind of installation with that film that they've been used to. But what really happens is, you know, all American pain protection or, you know, it doesn't matter, the brand, but let's say all American, right? Walker, Maryland. They're booked out typically four to six weeks at a time. And they always keep taking the clients in. They somehow manage to make it happen. That's why they didn't show up to XDC. And, but they've got a competitor that's a really good shop that's just a couple doors down from them. Like, I actually am not joking when I say I can walk out the store and walk to the next shop that's less than 60 seconds. And I know the operators, they're really good people. Mm -hmm. But... Right now, they don't have access to DAP in there. So they can't be as cost efficient as, as AAPP in terms of the time it takes to install, the amount of wasted material, and the amount of redos it requires in order to make it right. And a lot of times when you use another pattern, you know, you go to install it, and because the patterns aren't as consistent as ours, you end up having to, have to trim more or end up realizing, man, I need to like add more film to the pattern than what was already there, make some manipulation, got to rip it off and redo it. And that's a very costly, very costly uh, venture. So, so you can't like go cheap, cheap, cheap to try and win the business because you don't know what you're really in for. So where I'm going with this in a very long answer is that 
if I if I empower that competitor that's less than 57 seconds walking down the street with the same exact patterns, I'm 100% hurting my XBelt dealer network. And, you know, a lot of people will say, well, the reason you you cut off everybody from DAP, Chris, was because you wanted to buy their film. You want them to buy their film. Okay, that's a part of it. But the bigger part for me was that as a shop owner at the time with David Glendening, you know, my, my dear business partner, of course, that, you know, I'm not involved with now conflict of interest, but in, in British Columbia, I mean, I would have fucking lost my mind if I had known that you were selling, you know, platinum auto sports down the street, my, the same patterns I'm using against me and that he's undercutting me and able to do so with a less expensive film that he's getting out of China. Not that he was using Chinese film, by the way. But if he was, uh, you know, I'd lose my mind. And so as a shop owner, I thought this is ridiculous. And it's funny because, you know, I get my one-on-ones with Ryan Bate now. And I remember I, I was with uh, Matt Moreau originally. And I'm like, look, you're going to hate me. You're going to get a lot of angry calls, but I'm putting an end to this. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, why in the world you would help build, literally build another brand? through your patterns is ridiculous. And forgive me because there's other companies now that are doing it. I'm trying, I swear to you guys, Eastman, I love you guys. So forgive me. I'm totally not trying to throw you guys under the bus. I know Digi's now doing this too. I don't think that's much of a threat, mind you, but, um, you know, love you boys at Eastman, but I'm telling you, like you guys are now helping out competition to, you know, compete against your SunTech and Lumar guys with off brands, including no name, cheap, cheap, cheap brands that are coming out of, you know, other places in this world, B grade and C grade films using the patterns and you're selling it to anybody and everybody and touting it like that's some positive altruistic thing on your behalf. No, you're destroying your own network. And, and that's what we were doing. And that's why I stopped it. You, I mean, you thoroughly answered that question. That's a very interesting perspective. And thank you for, for drawing that out because um, you really took that full circle all the way to, like you said, Core and Digi, those are, I assume, seems like, you know, that's their strategy. And the question is, you know, what is the other side of that? Is that, is that a I'll strategy? Tell you, I'll, that, I'll tell you the thought process that goes behind it, which is, which is logical. Like I want to be fair to them, right? Uh, Dean Mitchell, you know him. Mm -hmm. uh, when when he came on board as the pattern designer for Window Tint in 2016, uh, he had a very different mentality. You know, was much more like kill him with kindness. If you give him a little bit and show him the value, they'll love you and they'll come to you for everything. And I'm like, dude, doesn't happen like that. Like, grow up. This is real world. And he actually wanted me to offer the window film patterns to anybody and everybody, regardless of brand. And, and that, this would, that this would work. This was a better sales strategy. And like, if you think that Core and Eastman is trying to purposely destroy their network, of course they're not. Of course they're not. They're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not doing it on purpose. I just have very strong feelings that that's what they're doing. And look, Maybe they want to jump on this podcast and disagree with me. I'd love it. You know, I, I, there, there's a lot of awesome people over there and, uh, you know, love those guys, right? You know, um, I'm just but, super curious because to think of it as a revenue source, right, is like where my that's mind went. Thinking. That's why I brought that, it up to you. And that's exactly like what they're thinking. You created, right. It's a revenue source. It's one that doesn't include any sort of uh, supply chains and, and maybe like labor to an extent and so on. But then on the other hand, you're saying, no, this is not a revenue source, or it could be, but it shouldn't be. This is actually an asset to your dealer network. This is such right. an important asset to your dealer network. It means ignoring millions of dollars because it's more valuable contained within your dealer network. That's right. Very, you know. Like, you know, again, getting back to Eastman, like Eastman 100% is putting a lot of effort into core and, you know, a lot of great features, really usable, friendly, um, you know, really developing more and more patterns and stuff. And like, I'm like, guys, like, let me get this straight. You guys want to, you guys want to claim that you're an equivalent to DAP. Okay. 
but you think it's beneficial for you to give that to, let's say, and I'll call up some brands, but not to be rude again to them, but like Aztec and Kavaka, like, and, you know, Autobahn and like these other companies that don't have patterns available to them. You think that it's smart to help, to help them? Why? Do you think that the installer is going to sit there and say, Hey, by the way, the reason your install looks so great is because of my Eastman core patterns that I got. And that's why they fit so nice. No, they're going to say, Hey man, like, look at this beautiful film I put on your car. This is from Stec, or Aztec. Sorry. I, I always get that wrong. Aztec and it's got a, you know, super nice gloss and super flat. And love, like, no, they talk about the product. They talk about the film, right? They don't talk about the pattern. There's no, there's no, there's no, you know, there's no notoriety or awareness given to the consumer about where that's coming from. So, you know, if I'm an Eastman customer, I would lose it on Eastman for offering core to everybody else. But again, maybe, maybe the Eastman, maybe the Eastman world is feeling the exact opposite. And if so, Hey, I, it's only my singular opinion, not, not anybody else's. Don't listen to me at all, because if everybody else feels that that's the way it should be, then... I like, started it off as a hypothetical, that's so that's, that's where Sorry. we are. With it. It's a hypothetical. Sorry. Hypothetical. Right, hypothetical. And, hypothetical. You know, um, you know, look, I, don't, I, know for, I know for a fact my intent, and I believe your intent when we have these conversations, is never in any way to bash or put down anything or whatever. It's to have thought-provoking conversations. And that's why I wanted to ask the question, because I want your perspective. I value the fact that I get to sit here and you, you give me an hour, or give everybody an hour, two hours of your time. I want to hear your thought process, you know, like on, on things. And um, that definitely served me with, you know, an angle that I didn't know was such a strong angle. So it is for me, look, I mean, probably the fastest rising person in, in the expo community, maybe in history, I don't know. And it's, it's not because I'm contentious. It's because I deliver insane results and you know, you go and look at our financials and you go and look at what other companies had happen for them last year versus ours. It was a drastic difference. And you look at where we are so far this year and it's an even more drastic difference. And it's from my, like, like, I don't want to like take all the, like take all the, you know, claim to fame attribute, but you know, the, this, the majority of this B2B you know, B2B strategy is mine. That's, that's just a hardcore fact and it's working. So I know that, you know, it would work for others, especially Eastman, you know, to me, and you know, I, I'd say this every single time, like to me, Eastman and 3M are my two other favorite companies in the space. Uh, I think they're both incredible. They've got, you know, really knowledgeable people that work with them. They've got, real serious integrity. They don't, uh, they do things the way I think things should be done in this business. Let's just put it that way. And uh, I wouldn't share, if I'm 3M, I wouldn't share anything with a competitor. And if I'm Eastman, I wouldn't share anything with a competitor either. That's my personal opinion. Very interesting. Thank you for your, <laughs> thank you for that opinion. I have, uh... <laughs> I have a few here and there. So, I mean, uh -oh. we'll continue down this road because I feel yeah, like I have go, a Go, go, dude. Like, you know me. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm so I'm curious. I don't bullshit you. You know me. I'll tell so it like through, exactly how I see it. So, through your eyes, core strategy is almost like simple, right? Like, I think they did it in a way, like, other than what you just said, like, they did everybody a favor by not charging per cut. They just said, hey, this is the price of your dealer. This is the price that you're not and run with it, which is, I think, a favor. But now if you go like to Digi, which you mentioned, Digi cut based on the promotions I see on Facebook and so on, like their strategy is kind of in a way, I think, more like, hey, we have this software and you should buy our film. The software isn't going to cost you much. We can sell you film. And I'm wondering how that, how those two things tie together well, because. Keep in mind who owns Digi now. Right. So you've got yeah. this, what is it called? Pacific Northwest fund or something like that. Right. It's a, it's a, you know, uh, private equity and a private equity investment company that bought Interwest, bought fellers and bought Digi. And I thought that was smart on their part because, you know, we all know, uh, 
sorry, again, trying so hard not to sound wrong. 3M is not notorious for great software, right? And are, are lots of patterns. You know, they're, they've got lots of other major attributes instead. That's not the strongest. And so when, when InterWest grabbed them, I was like, wow. Or sorry, when, when, sorry, when this company grabbed InterWest, I was like, wow, what's the next play? You know, you've got a very large 3M distributor, but we all know that, like, for instance, our friend Manny at EPD is a massive distributor. And the weirdest part of all for me was that they allowed all of them to be non-territorial and be nationwide. So they're all now going to compete for the same customer. I think for Manny and EPD, that would vote very well. I'm not sure that that makes sense for InterWest. I'm again, I'm, but I'm not sure, right? I'm sure there's a lot of very smart people that thought about this and I, maybe I haven't considered all the angles. Um, but uh, Digi is, you know, was no more for like a dealership services kind of thing. It was mostly a preload of window tint kind of thing. Maybe door edge, door pockets. <sighs> uh, it would not be my choice for paint protection film patterns ever in the least. Maybe I'm going to make a very angry phone call from a lawyer from them tomorrow, but it is what it is. I mean, look, you know, there's... Really, in the PPF pattern department, Premium Shield was great. Eastman was very smart in acquiring that. Film Wraps was great. Expo was really smart in acquiring that. You know, Proform was amazing. Uh, Expo was smart in acquiring that. You know, um, Tom, I forget, you know, the name of that operation right now in, in the UK was amazing. Well, Expo was smart in acquiring that. Why? Well, it's just to keep out the, the actual only really good patterns out there from the hands of the competition. And so Digi offering their patterns to anybody makes a lot of sense to me. That's one that makes sense. Why? Well, it's not a, it's not a film company. It's not known as a film company is what I should say, right? It's, it's known more for its software and its preload program. It, you know, I think it's more known for as an installation in essence, right? A, a, a operation. So I actually think that that one is logical um, and not tying it to a brand. I would do it that way. What I'm wondering, of course, is what happens when somebody is upset with a PPF pattern? You know, with Core, I, at least if they install a, 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 an Eastman product, let's say that a pattern was off. Let's just say, because it, look, even for Expo, like, if you're saying we've never had a mistake in a pattern, of course we have. Um, and it, it happens very rarely because we test fit everything six and seven times over. But, you know, have we ever uploaded something and claimed it was one thing and then actually we, we mislabel it and, and, you know, made a mistake? Yeah, but when that's rarely happened, maybe one in a thousand times, what are we doing? Well, we're crediting the film back to that operation right and we're saying hey our bad so sorry here's the film and and here's your cut credits and back and we've tagged it as it should have been well i'm i'm sure i'm 100 sure without actually knowing this uh that i'm sure core would do the same thing right like if you installed suntech or lumor and maybe the pattern was a mistake i'm sure that they would go no problem you're right it's on us uh here's your film and and credit and you know here's your cut credits well what do you do when it's an off brand like, what are you going to do? You're, you're Eastman and you're going to go buy Aztec for them? I don't think so. I assume you're not. And Digi? There's no way. So what are you going to do? Maybe you're going to say, hey, here's some 3M film for you to <laughs> install the bumper instead when you're not 3M. I, maybe that's a strategy. I don't know. That's a crazy hypothetical. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think that Digi having uh, the software available is fine, but I just think that you're just going to have um, some customers that might be expecting more, uh, a better quality of fitment than they're going to get a hold of. And I, 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 I've heard that their window tint patterns are, are, are pretty decent. Like, look, there's only, you know, a few window tint pattern companies out there, film bottle design, right? They have pretty decent window tint patterns. Um, DigiCut, from what I understand, has got pretty decent window tint patterns. Um, but, you know, I think that they're all relying on third-party 
um, pattern design like we used to. And, you know, while we had decent patterns pre-16, you know, I wouldn't run my business exclusively off of that and, and count on that. And thankfully from 16 onwards, it's all in-house. Now I can bank on it, but, you know, just like the PPF, but we're going to see. I don't, I don't know. It's an interesting play. Yeah. Interesting play indeed. I, I, I wonder if they're trying to get more customer base, right? Like, especially because again, like the gloves are off with regards to, to geographical boundaries as a distributor for 3M and, you know, having all uh, fellers as well, right? Like maybe that's the play. Maybe the play is, Hey, if we're in front of more customers, we've got more customer base, there's more to market to bring out new products, try and convince them to make a switch possible. Maybe I'm giving them a strategy right now. I'll work on the side. <laughs> it's, it's all um, thought provoking hypotheticals. Hop hypothetical. So what's up with um, Matt Moreau winning first out of 2,500 oh people in a hundred miles? And uh, like, I don't know if I should say all this on this podcast, but I will because I, I can't and I, I'm just not, I'm not able to like hold back. Matt Moreau, you know, my, my direct boss, right? Gifted, talented, driven, obsessed, partially insane, like all of us that are successful in this business. I mean, the guy was tinting at 60, 16 years of age in Quebec and calls his mom all of a sudden and he's down in Mexico tinting windows in Mexico instead because he didn't want to be in the cold that winter and, you know, ends up buying film and running around and selling it out of the back of his van and then creating Parasol Canada, the distributor for Expel and, and Solex and others and ASWF and sells that to Expel and then was the creator of Protex franchise and, you know, sells that to Expel. I mean, now he's the senior VP of Expel and, you know, I think we all know he's done very well for himself and probably one of the fiercest negotiators on the planet. Like, I would not want to be sitting across the negotiating table from him. You know, I'm very, very confident, as you know, in my closing skills. I think I'm arguably one of the world's greatest um, ever. <laughs> and I, Matt is one of those people that I know, you know, and again, there's a bunch of people. So, I mean, you know, I say one of the greatest, I mean, is there thousands, whatever, but Matt is another one that, that I know is up there. Well, last year he tells me I'm, I'm doing this race and I'm race, whatever some attack thing. And I'm like, what? And I, I didn't know what it was. You know, I've heard of the Tour de France and I'm like, oh, oh some localized bicycle race. Then I find out it's a hundred miles. And I'm like, wait, wait, so that's, a, that's a long distance. And he's like, yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he, he started from scratch. Like the, the guy had never, I don't even know if he ever bicycled a day in his life up to whatever, three, four years ago. I, I actually don't know. Maybe he's never. And um, he gets a swim coach and he gets like a training coach and this and that. And the guy fucking goes and makes 10th place, never doing a race in his entire life. And his very first, and listen, there's a lot of pro riders in this race, a lot. Right. right. And most of them are in their 20s. And uh, he gets 10th, and I think he was first in his age division. And 10th overall, and I'm like blown away with that. And he's like, mark my words, next year I'm going to be on the top of that podium. And I'm like, you know, like you're, it's your friend, right? Like he's my buddy, he's my boss, but he's my friend and I'm a pretty tight relationship and trying to be encouraging. But at the same time, I'm in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, whatever, like Matt, like, come on, you should be more realistic. And, and he, you know, he gets a new team put together, maybe some of the existing team and he gets a, I think he got a sports psychology coach. And I know he actually reached out to Lance Armstrong himself to see if he would coach him. And, uh, that didn't work out, but I mean, that's how serious he was. And the guy bicycles, like, I don't know, like, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know if it's a couple hundred miles a week. He's so obsessed with winning that he's got like, he trains himself on when and how to pee, right? Because 
you're on a four or five hour bicycle ride. You don't want to have to pull over and pee. Right. So like, you know, he literally like, okay, every morning if I have my coffee at let's say 7 a.m. and I've got to go pee at eight and he's got that down to like a mad science and he's, you know, he's got apps and watches and like <laughs> anything and everything you think of and he's eating like, I don't know if he's going to allow me to talk about this and he's going to probably kill me tomorrow, probably tell me I'm fired. But he's like, he's going through like weeks where he's literally eating nothing but like T-bone steak. And I'm not exaggerating. Like, is it nothing but protein? Not, not a single thing on the plate besides beef. And, you know, he starts getting me into it and I'm checking my blood <laughs> shit levels and then I'm posting how I'm getting better and he's showing me one and so his has got like his has got like a warning on the bottom like make sure that you're consulting a physician at this level <laughs> he's like obsessed yeah so so the the day of the of the race I I couldn't be there I I was somewhere else um on that day and I was and I was excited like, to see what he came in. I was thinking like, oh, he's probably going to do better than 10th last year. He's, I'm sure he's going to come in first for his age group then. And, you know, maybe, hopefully he finishes on the podium. But, man, I, I'm ready to encourage him regardless of his results. And, you know, XFL was the title sponsor for it and everything. And, I mean, it, it's actually a pretty pretty big deal. And, of course, especially since, you know, we acquired Invisiframe. What a nice, what a nice you know, symbiotic relationship that all is. Mm -hmm. And he sends me this picture and it's fucking him on the fucking first place podium position. And I look at the picture and I'm thinking, is it age group? Like, is it first and then second? And I'm looking at the guys beside him in the picture. I'm zooming in and I'm like, no, these guys are like 20 or 25 or 30 years of age max. And I'm like, dude, is that you? Because he has his helmet on too, right? And I'm wondering like, it looks like Matt, but what if it's not Matt? Like, I, I was so scared that I was actually going to say congratulations for first, and yet maybe it's not him. Like, that's how nervous I was. And and he's like, calls me, and he's like, man, I knew you'd love it. And I was like, fuck you. You fucking did it. Holy fucking shit. I'm fucking freaking out. Everybody in Expo's community is freaking out, and none of us to this day can possibly imagine the drive that man has to make something like that happen. So I was talking to my professor in jujitsu, and there's this current like phenom named Mika Galvão, and Mika Galvão is a black belt at 19 years of age. Keep in mind that I got mine at 50, 50 or 51, right? I just turned 52 the other day, so yeah, 50. Happy birthday! Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, April 30th. Uh, by the way, David Glendening, happy birthday tomorrow. May, may the fourth be with you. And uh, had to get that in there. And, uh, you know, so I'm talking to my professor. I'm like, it would be like me going up against Mika Galvao and not only somehow managing to survive a 20-minute match with this guy, but, but beating him. Like, right. never in a billion years is that happening. Mika could probably have both arms tied behind his back and still tap me out somehow. And that's what he did. Like, that's what he did. And like to work underneath a man like him. Wow. That's not, you know, empowering and motivating and uplifting and a little scary at the same time. I don't know what it is. Well, here's the other part. And I'm not allowed to say this for sure, but the question is, where is he now going in Europe? Right. Like, Meaning he's, he's, I, I, I think what he's explaining to me is that by winning the top, you now get to compete in a European uh, bicycle race. And what I'm asking him, which he hasn't been able to answer yet is, is, is this mean he's able to do the tour de France? And I'm like, holy shit, if you can, like, even if you came in dead last to say you compete in the tour de France would be so fucking cool. I mean, look, you mentioned it, like what he was doing at SEMA. So that was last November. And then when I saw on Facebook, all of a sudden, the uh, pictures of him, you know, in the announcements, it's like, you know, it really hit 
to me because, you know, we, I think we all have like narratives oftentimes of like kind of who we are and the things we're good at, the things we're not good at and so on. And we potentially live within those, you know, confinements sometimes. And, yes. you know, I, I, I don't watch the UFC and go, I could start training and compete. No, I feel like I'm at an age where I could start training and I could have a child and that child could start training and beat me. That's essentially the, do you know what I'm that's saying? A, that's that's what, they're, they're, um, I yeah. get that. Yeah. So to see somebody as an adult like in his forties, not a cyclist, pick up cycling and in a short time, not just compete, but beat all those people that say, all I do is cycle. I live on a bike. I've been doing this for 30 years. I'm a professional. I'm number one at this. I've won all these things. And yeah. to come in and beat every one of them. Yeah. It's, it's just like, it's, you know, it has that bigger meaning of like, you have to just question like, where are you limiting yourself in your life that you shouldn't be limiting yourself? And what doors should you maybe open that you never thought about or something that comes your way? Like it's super inspiring. Like a huge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, 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 you said it perfectly. I don't think that, that man has any limitations or boundaries. Like to do what he did, regardless of the physical attributes that would be required, and at 46 years of age to beat 20 year olds that, like you said, are some of those guys raced in the Tour de France, some of them placed in the Tour de France. And <laughs> to do that, like the mental fortitude. I asked him, like, hey, at any moment during that race, were you breaking down, right? Like, look, I, I've competed on a world level in jiu-jitsu. And many a time have I, you know, mentally defeated myself, either prior to the fight or even during the fight. It's 100% happened. And I said to him, like, did you have any feelings like that? Not once. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I would hear some that hear that from somebody and go, yeah, okay, whatever, buddy. Like, sure. With him, I believe it. But I but I got him back. I sent him this insanely large Harry and David's <laughs> gift basket. <laughs> like huge. <laughs> With nothing but like Fruit. chocolate and caramels and <laughs> Yeah, some fruit too. But yeah. There's no way. No, and I'm like, congratulations, buddy, from Tatiana and I. We will I'm thinking, put on some fat, please. Because you're making me that look bad. That yeah. meal after that race had to be something, you know? I I, I, I should have asked him, what was your congrats? Like, you know, I had my meal the night before I fight, right? I have my congratulatory meal, if you will, the night before, right? I always have pasta and veal uh, marsala that's my go-to and then the day after i fight whether i win or lose i i go hit up fast food right like i'm hitting up taco bell and mcdonald's and like anything that really i can get a hold of and get you know some fat and calories back in me i need to ask him what was your celebratory meal you probably tell me another steak and potato oh, sorry a steak and asparagus or something i don't know probably right he started training for next year i would imagine yeah he, i you know he, he he was gonna go hardcore into jiu-jitsu i set him up with a professor here in san antonio daniel panero that was oh did you see uh, you know what we didn't share that so at dealer conference this year last year i had some friends that wanted to go to jiu-jitsu at dealer conference you know and Brett and me and Tyler and Ray and some people we went. And so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna do something a little more serious about it this year. And so I had Kristen put together this, this thing where we sent it out to every single attendee that was attending dealer conference, that if they had done jujitsu, at least in the past, I wasn't willing to like take somebody like never done it. Like, hey, this is your first class. We went and trained with uh, world, world uh, champion, Daniel Panetto at his place. And we had 31 of us on the mats um, for a private, uh, uh, for a private seminar. Uh, my buddy Cameron Rhodes was there. Uh, David Klimek was there. Uh, I mean, it was pretty intense. Cam and I um, came up through Checkmat for the most part together. Cameron's a uh, world champion, Pan Am's, American national. I mean, the guys won everything. So it was awesome to have him there. But um, we did this private. Anyways, going back to it, I, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, I got 
Matt, I told Matt, like, how can you be this obsessive and not and not have done a martial art? Like, you need to do jujitsu. Like, you need to. Like, you're gonna kick my ass, I'm sure, in two years, and then you're gonna go on and become world champion. And um, and and yet, he was like, yeah. The minute I'm done with this race, I'm going full bore. But he won the race, and by winning the race, it gives you the opportunity now to go and race by uh you know by invite you you can't get into like the european the top and and tour de france and stuff like that without winning some other qualifier mm -hmm. and i i don't i suspect that he's not gonna go hardcore into jujitsu because he's already telling me about his training and gotta keep on top of his training and i'm like Matt, you told me right after the race you're gonna go jujitsu and it's not happening now so well i i hope it is but we'll see i mean it's just uh I know he's not like a super public facing, but like that story hopefully continues to get out there because I could see like, it's inspiring. I could see a lot of people jumping on a bike and like that just being some, you know, way that they uh, kind of change their health or anything. Like, it's just uh, the hell of a story. You don't see many first places in something that big come along from people who haven't been doing it their whole life. You know? No, how is, by the way, how is Coachella? Coachella was fucking incredible. Right. The, uh, the performance is there. I haven't been around. I've never been around performances of that capacity, of that magnitude. And then being obviously in a place that had many of them going on, you see different setups and the stages and the lights and, and the way, you know, I also had the opportunity to go to WrestleMania in um, Los Angeles about a month ago. So some of the things that I drew from both was just you, you in person, you see the performers and, you know, you see them both as they're just a regular person but you also see what they're doing to, and what it takes to grab that crowd and to kind of like work the crowd and, and, get, and be involved. And you see all the lights and the theatrics and everything that goes involved, that's involved, as well as everything down to what they're wearing at different times. And seeing that in person and feeling that, like it's definitely not an experience that you get through a television or you get through a radio or whatever. Um, so it was incredible because it really was one of my first times being in that environment. Yeah, you know, look, you you went to one of the Ryan Martin, oh, you didn't end up getting there, shit. Say what? I was gonna say the Ryan Martin experience. Oh, you did get to a Ryan Martin experience. Yes. Like, it's the same thing. Like, you yeah. can see drag racing till the cows come home online, on TV, whatever, and it's, it's cool. Like, it's exciting and you're trying to get the, emo but man, you get down on that track and you stand three feet behind the car as that 3,500 horsepower car launches down that speedway. That, that feeling is so visceral. And I, and that, you know, that, you know, I think of the same thing when you go to really good concerts and stuff like that, really good productions, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of really positive um, remarks about Tinter Battles as an example, because there was a lot of production behind that. You know, uh, Carlos did such a great job with his emceeing and, and, you know, that whole affair. And then, you know, you know, look at WFR and theirs, right? That first one, I think it was the first one which was the Atlanta that I was at. This year it's way bigger and better, you know, and, and look at SEMA and things like, again, like, you know, XDC. Until you've been there and experienced it, you'll never get it. And, like, productions like Coachella, mind-blowing. Mind blowing. Even WWE, like you said, I, I, I've been to a WW, uh, WWF, I think it was before WWE, um, you know, event, um, a WrestleMania, if I remember correctly. And it was, it was, it was awesome. And I wasn't even into wrestling. You know, you go right. to live sports, you know, you might not like it, but you go to it live, it changes everything. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And um, I just can't help it. That's, you know, we we're speaking about. XDC and how it, it's going to outgrow where it's, it uh, is. You just think of like arena, you think like, like I, I think like Tony Robbins-ish vibe, like feeling there's just so many people and things going on. And then, you know, like SEMA parties, obviously. So what I'm saying is it feels like everybody will continue to like raise the bar and um, who knows, like what kind of performances and environments will be in. There's, there's only two hotels in San Antonio that can host xdc period that are large enough and it's the grand hyatt and it's the marriott river center
And the cool part is the Marriott River Center does have the Marriott River Walk literally across the street. So if you needed to do a dual hotel thing, you could. But keep in mind that you've got to have, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> arenas that are large enough to sit everybody during the general sessions and what have you. And then, of course, our, you know, all the breakout sessions and everything. So, you know, people have asked me many times, why, you know, have you guys ever considered hosting another city? Yes, we definitely have. We'd like to. But you're talking about adding at least a quarter million dollars to the bill because you've got to pay for all that staff to go put it all together. Like we have over 150 staff members involved with dealer conference on its own, just, just XDC. Wow. And of course, never mind all the equipment and everything that we're pulling from corporate and all that. So, and you know, look, it's no, like you can see our financials, like we, you know, we charge people for dealer conference and yet we, we, you know, out of our pocket, there's still many, many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars that we still spend above and beyond all that. Um, but one day, yeah, you know, we'll probably end up having it to be in the convention center versus uh, the hotel. And, you know, maybe the idea of, uh, out, you know, external, uh, another city somewhere else comes down that comes down for that opportunity and happens. Yeah. Well, these, uh, it just, any way you slice it, whether there's lights and, and stages or not, these events that bring people together have an impact and uh, they're a lot of fun and there's a lot of them and there only seems to be more and more. So, Yeah, our good friend Marco said, uh, what's up and shouted out saying savage or something like that. So, Marco? Well, Marco? Yeah, Marco's with, uh, he's helping, uh, doing a great job with Matico right now and they're in the clear plex. Um, windshield uh, protection film. Uh, I've been hearing some amazing things, uh, some great things about it. So good on them. Marco the goat. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, did, we get any, did we get any difficult questions coming in or should we just like call it a day? I think we captivated people with this conversation. Okay. Um, so they were like watching and not asking questions because <laughs> it's a good thing. Like if, you know, like in a movie, if you're not talking, it means it's a good movie. I feel like. I, I'm, good, I'm good with it if you are. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thank you. I really appreciate the candidness. It, it definitely, you know, look, it could be safer to just simply say, hey, I can't talk about that because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or I don't want to mention any of this or that. But it's, it's, I think it's, it's valuable and um, it's valuable and it just should be out there. Like, to be able to talk freely and talk about ideas and, and evaluate things and have open discussion. And uh, I really appreciate that. You're so always willing and open to do that. And so candid. Yeah. Look, I mean, you know, we've had Manny on here many times and him and I don't, do not always agree. Um, we have a profound respect for each other and, and each other's brands that we represent. And uh, you know, I, I, I strong, I, I, <laughs> I know inside out how many people don't agree with with me on this uh, model, especially those that want to have, let's say, DAP or want to have my paint protection film or want to have my window tint and don't want to have the rest of it with it. And, I, and look, that's that's great. Like we are all individuals. We are all responsible for our own uh, businesses and or operations that we work for. And, uh, you know, we need to respect each other and the way that we that we choose to do things and not try and force ourselves on anyone. You know, we said this last time, but you know, every once in a while people will be like, you know, why, why are you trying to tell me how to run my business with your all in X spell? And I'm like, well, why are you trying to tell me how to run my business with my all in X spell? Like I can flip that on you. Like you, if you feel this isn't good for you, then cool. Then don't take it and, you know, use your current product brands and, leave us out of the equation. But the same way as you want me to respect you for choosing that, please respect me for choosing the model that I'm choosing to do business in. So I think that this is a phenomenal community. We've got a lot of amazing people in here. You know, most of the individuals in this community were installers that became shop owners. You know, they're living the American dream. They're trying their damnedest to, to eke out a great living for themselves and their family. And, you know, and become a juggernaut like like some of the obvious ones are. And how much more could you ask for? Like, you're your own person with your own destiny and you're the one in control of it. So, 
Uh, love you all. And obviously, I hope everybody, regardless of brand, regardless of competitor or not, regardless of who you, you know, who you are in this industry, I hope you all do well. I, I know that there's room for everybody to, to make sure that happens. And Eric, thank you. I mean, I think that your platform is incredible. You know that. That's why I've done this one more than anyone else's. And uh, I will continue to to do these as often as you like. I, I know that uh, I won't steal a thunder, but I know what your topic is next week. And I'm really excited for that. I, I definitely am going to listen in. Well, no reason, no reason to worry about stealing the thunder because next week is no one other than Lightning Mike Burke to talk about Bar Rescue, or I'm sorry, Tint Rescue. Tint Rescue, yeah. Tint Rescue, the show him and Josh are co-hosting and working on. Yeah, they're uh, they're doing some really really cool stuff. They, uh, I, I can't, I'm actually gonna, I have to be quiet because I know that I'll start, I'll keep talking and I'll end up revealing some of the secret. You will. You will, you might be in tears next week with, with feelings of positive emotion with this one. Um, amazing story. Amazing. Amazing story. And who, who better to do it with than Lightning Mike? And, uh, and of course, you know, as you said, partnered up with uh, none other than Mr. Popinick from Blackout. And, uh, you know, awesome, 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 awesome duo. Cool. Well, um, I can't I'm looking forward to next week, but thank you, Chris, as always, I, I very much sincere you coming on here, sharing your time and, uh, and, uh, you know, your friendship and the whole deal. So it's, uh, it's always a fun time. Me too. Thank you so much. And good night, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Bye everyone. Thank you Bye -bye. for watching as always.